Good morning. I'm looking a little bit crazy. I am going away. Oh, look how lovely this looks. No, it's in the background. I'm going away tomorrow. It's my friend Sophie's wedding this weekend and I'm a bridesmaid. Oh, I just ran upstairs. <laughs> I do that so often, I'm so impatient. I run downstairs, grab the camera, run upstairs and immediately press record. And I wonder why I'm out of breath. It's my friend Sophie's we wedding this weekend in Italy and today is the last day before we drive up to London and then we fly on Friday and so I'm doing my kind of like pre-wedding bridesmaid pampering routine. I just had a shower. I haven't washed my hair because I'm getting my hair cut. Is it cut or coloured later? I always forget because I don't cut it that regularly anymore. I don't think it's a cut. I think it's just a colour and then I'll have a fresh blow dry. Though I probably, I need to ask Sophie, I imagine I'll have to wash it again for the hairstylist on the actual day. But anyway, I'll turn up with lovely blow dried hair. And when I was in Boots yesterday, I saw some fake tanner, self tanner, and I was, um, in my previous video, probably saw I was trying on my outfits for this wedding, and I love my pale skin. You know that I've been flaunting it on this channel for years. I have never ever tanned my skin since being on YouTube. I sometimes did it when I was younger, occasionally. So growing up, <laughs> it definitely was the thing that everyone did. Um, I occasionally would do that on nights out, mainly just like the kind of wash off stuff. I feel like I, I feel like tan has come a long way and you can get tanners that are a bit more natural, that are more gradual. And I feel like why not on holiday for fun? I can't get a tan. So <laughs> if I can't get a tan, everyone else can, then why not give it a go just for, just for the fun of it, for Italy and for maybe when we go to Mallorca. I got this Vita Liberata one because I do remember seeing people talk about how this is a really great one because it's more organic and natural. Of course, it's cruelty free. Um, and this is their, Tanning lotion with instant guide colour. I thought that was good for me because I never have done it before. <laughs> maybe since I was like 18, even younger, maybe like 16. So I thought this would be a good one. I also picked up their mitt and I funnily enough just got this as a PR, Winds or Wines um, Marrakesh Sun Instant Glow uh, Tinting Water. So you can mix this in with your moisturiser um, or just put it on your face. And yeah, I feel like the, the bridesmaid dress I'm wearing is a golden sun, but like um, burnt orange dress. And I feel like it would look lovely with a bit of a tan because I have like the dark hair uh, and it's like curly. I feel like if I have a tan, I maybe will look more Italian. <laughs> so why not? I feel like I had this um, thing for years where I was like, no, I should never change my skin color because I'm pale, because that means I don't like my pale skin. And now I've come to the realization that for a fun event, I love my pale skin. I actually think it's one of my favorite features about myself and I love my freckles. But I think for a holiday event um, that's abroad for fun, why not? There's no harm in it. So we're gonna give this a go. I've never done this, so I'm a bit nervous. I'm gonna do it off camera and I'm gonna be very, very dark because it's got a, uh, a guide color. So it says apply to clean exfoliated skin. So I was gonna tell you my routine of what I just did. So I dry brushed. It's in the shower, but I did dry brush. And if you don't know what dry brushing is, I'm gonna do it more because that was really relaxing and it felt so good. It's just one of these brushes. I feel like you can get them everywhere. And you just do this before the shower. You just brush gently. You don't need to push down because this is already quite brittle. You brush towards the heart. So you go up on your legs and then you go up on your arms and then you go down towards the heart like this. It's just to help with circulation and it really exfoliates your skin well. And then I had some of this left over. There was just like a tiny bit left. It's the Soap and Glory Peach Please Body Scrub. I think that they sent this to me um, because they recently went cruelty free. And I just used that all over my body and exfoliated. And I also used an exfoliating bar of soap and I just really thoroughly washed my whole body and exfoliated. I shaved as well. I have seen like, I watched a quick video and some people say not to shave before tanning, but I feel like if I shaved after, I would just take the tan off. So I've just shaved. I mean, maybe that'll be a mistake, but I don't really care enough. It's not <laughs> that big of a deal, but um, hopefully I'll be a bit more golden and it means that my outfit for the day and the other outfits will have that golden glow to look like I'm on holiday. But it says apply to clean exfoliated skin, check lightly moisturize dry areas, elbows, knees, ankles, hands, squeeze product onto tanning mitt and apply onto skin, carefully blending in long circular movements, leave for six to four hours, six to eight hours before showering or longer for a darker result, rinse and pat dry. So I'm gonna do six hours cause I do not want to be dark. 
and I'm gonna do this off camera and then report back and I'm probably gonna be really dark for this video, which will be very funny. Okay, I haven't done my face, but I am hilariously orange and it's a guide color though, so it's fine. But actually, I see a lot of people who wear fake tan rocking around <laughs> looking like this and I've actually just realized that because I have a hair appointment at three, I'm only gonna be able to leave this on until like, maybe like two o'clock because I have to leave and get there. So I won't even be leaving it on for too long, which is probably a good thing because it means that I won't be like shocked by the result. So I'm just gonna get myself ready and I'm gonna use those tanning drops. Actually, I'll show you how I use them. So I've got the guide color tan on. It looks very orange to me, look at my arms, but it's the guide color, so it'll be fine. My legs in particular. <laughs> so I need to um, match my face. So I'm gonna take my moisturizer. This is literally nearly gone. I've also, uh, woo! <laughs> that's gross into my face. I also put moisturizer, I don't know if I said this before I filmed, <clears throat> but I put moisturizer on my elbows, my knees, my ankles. Also afterwards, because I noticed there were kind of lines on my neck, I moisturized my neck and I've moisturized my hands and then I've just washed my hands because I kind of was a bit like I don't really want them to be super tanned. Maybe that's a mistake, but I don't know. I'll probably see how it looks and if, if my, t my hands look really different, then I will add some more fake tan tomorrow. So two to three drops. So I'm just gonna do two into my moisturizer, mix that all in. And then hopefully if I do this today and tomorrow, my skin will have a little bit of a glow. Get those ears. And the good thing about, I guess you just couldn't add lots of, I'll add some bronzer to my face to make it match the rest of me. I'm slightly worried that I don't have like dark foundation, but I know that some of the girls, well, Sophie has lovely tan skin. Well, maybe I should just do this because then that will add the tanning drops to my hands. I'm gonna go wash my hands though because I don't want the palms <laughs> orange. My assumption is that it's not gonna be anywhere near as visible by the time I wash it off. I am gonna do my makeup now. I will show you I've kind of half done my packing because I filmed yesterday what I want to take with me and kind of planned it. So I kind of know what I'm taking. I had a slight, I don't know, I. Is it just me? The older I get, I get so stressy now about packing. I don't know what's wrong with me. Alex is always like, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? Because every time I go to pack, I like, it's all I think about is what I'm taking and planning what I'm taking. And it's almost, and I'm not saying this lightly because I do actually deal with OCD like tendencies. Um, it becomes a bit OCD. Like I'm like checking and like rechecking and like, I need to like calm down. Like I'm fine. I think it's because it's cabin luggage and so I'm thinking about my toiletries and whether I've got everything and then I guess I have this thing like I worry that I've had it before where I've been on holiday and I've not packed enough and then I have to wear like dirty clothes or I don't really want to wear the thing that I've packed because it's uncomfortable stuff like that and I'm overthinking it and I need to just chill out I think I will um basically pack what I decided because it all looks really nice and then I will pack just like one extra light thing. I've got like a long black maxi dress that I'm pretty certain will fit in my, my luggage with everything else because it's so small. And that's quite a good basic in case I don't really want to wear like a nice outfit on the last day if I feel tired or something. And then I can just enjoy myself. It's kind of nice that I've got my hair today because it kind of forces me to give myself a little bit of a pamper. I don't know how you feel about this, but I've been thinking about reducing my videos to one video a week. I feel like I do this constantly. I have this conversation with you so often and you've probably noticed over the years, I go back and forth between doing one video a week and two. And maybe this is really boring for you, but the reason I like two is because I have like a variety of content. It kind of means I can keep up with the weekly vlogs. So you're up to date but then I can also add in things like food videos or renovation videos or videos on specific topics. Um, because if I just do one video a week and that week it's a food video, then you kind of miss out on a vlog and then you don't really know what's going on with me. And sometimes when I pick up the camera again, it's like, oh my gosh, I haven't picked up the camera in ages. So that's, that's my only thing. 
but let me know what you think because maybe I'm just overthinking it and maybe it's literally fine because I realistically only do a food video like once a month anyway so it really is not a problem but then I know lots of you don't do like the two videos a week my other thing is that because I do two videos a week on YouTube and I'm the one filming and editing I end up not really posting on other social media so I don't really post on Instagram and I know that if I had one video on YouTube I'd have a bit more time to post on Instagram and TikTok and stuff so let me know your thoughts I'd really like to hear them it would actually help me so please let me know your thoughts down below the other thing is you earn revenue from YouTube just to be frank with you like it's a business and it would kind of be like if you were working in an office you like kind of like re going from full-time to part-time because obviously if I post one less video a week that's halving my YouTube income so that's another thing to think about but then I think you know if it's if it's my own I don't know happiness and my own enjoyment and I can maybe focus more on other things then maybe it's worth it but I'd love to hear what you think I don't really want to put too much makeup on today because I'm I'm getting my hair done and that can mean that you look a bit gross in the mirror. By the way, this was from Ciate London and it's a dewy stick. First time trying it. Okay, first thought is <laughs> that's wiped off all my foundation. Maybe I've used that wrong, but that literally from doing it like that, which I'm assuming is how you're supposed to do it, that's wiped off all of my foundation in that spot. So not ideal okay i probably wouldn't use that again has it made my highlight it has done a nice highlight maybe i just need to be more gentle with it like more like that or maybe i need to put it on my finger and dab it on i'm sure it was me up applying it a bit wrong but this was another thing that they sent me the microblade black brow i think the th reason this is a microblade thing is because it's like little hairs so you don't have to do individual strokes it's kind of there for you oh it's quite heavy i get the idea but i'm trying to see how it actually does do it on your eye yeah i feel like i get the idea but it doesn't actually do it on your eyebrow because there's like hairs in the way so it kind of just does like quite a large stamp I mean, actually, at the bottom, that has done it nice and thinly. It's probably not the right colour for my eyebrows. I mean, that looks fine. I don't know that that's something that I would use, though, because I find actually using that was a bit more challenging than the control you'd have with just a single pencil or single, like, small little eyeliner. It's just definitely not the right colour, though, because it's brown. <laughs> my hair's definitely darker. That's okay though. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that for today, even if I'm getting my hair done, because I don't really want to have makeup on today. Not really feeling it. And I'm now debating like, do I need to make my hair nice? This is the thing I always think with the hairdressers. I think, should I bother making my hair nice? Because they literally just immediately put hair dye on it. So but then you don't want to show up looking completely. I'm gonna quickly steam it. This is my little hack for you. So if you're in the wavy curly hair gang, get your steamer if you don't have a steamer then probably this is not important for you but if you have a steamer this is such a great way to refresh your hair i find if i use a spray bottle with water it makes your hair very wet and i find it can actually make my hair a bit frizzier um and almost like more weighed down because i think that when you get it really wet it kind of reactivates the products and i've just found when i do steaming it makes your hair so voluminous and really like soft looking and it can it just like rehydrates your hair in the best way and it's really quick and easy so all you do literally is just to steam your hair I mean, my hair looks fine as it is because i did it yesterday so and you literally just steam it and i just use one sort of tank of water and it kind of reshapes the curls kind of brings them out again if you are someone who has a lot of makeup though you probably want to do this off before you do your makeup because it might make your makeup a bit wet or ruin it a bit but you see all of that steam i mean maybe some people would argue this is putting heat on your hair and that's not the best idea but i don't know that it's heat because it's like hot steam someone let me know because you're not actually directly putting like a hot plate on your hair 
it's just warm steam. And I know that when I was in Thailand and Southeast Asia, my hair looked amazing. It literally looked like I used a curling iron to style my hair because it was so hydrated and it looked so soft. And that was back in the days when I literally only used shampoo. Um, and I think it's because of the humidity. So this really does add something. And I also like to do the roots. So it kind of adds volume. But I just feel like it gives you the best hair day and I flip upside down. See, look at that, the volume. Whereas before it looked a little bit slept on. And you can also give it a little scrunch. probably good for your face as well you know steaming your face isn't that a thing and then it will look really frizzy just for a minute like you can see the fuzz but that does calm down but what I do is I take a like a leave-in this is just like a detangling cream but you could literally use conditioner or a leave-in conditioner I use the tiniest little amount and then just swipe it through your hair which again by the way if you have wavy or curly hair this is what your hair needs and I didn't realize that for so long because I have fine hair. I used to think, well, it's gonna weigh my hair down. It's gonna make my hair greasy. And actually the best thing if you've got wavy or curly hair is to moisturize it um, and don't be afraid. Obviously you need to find the products that work for your hair types. So if you've got wavy or fine hair, you can't be using heavy products for curly hair because your hair is not the same as someone with curly hair. But there are so many products for wavy hair that are lighter like this is not a heavy product and I actually find my hair can take quite a lot of product I'm not sure why so just figure that out figure out the porosity of your hair the texture the just figure it out <laughs> and then find products that are like kind of meant or designed for that hair type and moisturize your hair steam it make it moisturize if you want to leave a lot of time between washes stretch it out by washing it less and then when you are washing it use lovely conditioners and masks to really moisturize and nourish your hair. But yeah, my hair, I feel like it looks way better now. It looks like beachy and mermaidy, which is, is the style I prefer. I don't love it when it's too like defined. Not that you can see it because I'm wearing a black top, but I put a black top on because of the fake tan. Anyway, I've given you a very chatty introduction to this video. So I'm going to sit on my computer now until I go to get my hair done because I have a video to edit. We'll get our hair done and then we'll pack. Actually, let me show you the packing I've done so far. So here is the messy packing. We've got my shoes, my three pairs of Aveas, which I should have a discount for still, Madel 12. Um, and I just need to decide on these other outfits and what I'm wearing for the journey because there's gonna be three travel days, one to London, one to Italy, and then one back home. Um, and I can leave an extra outfit in the car, like some sweats to just, throw on when I get in the car to be comfortable and then I've got I started on my swim costume my underwear and this is like products that don't need to be in the liquids stuff like this confuses me though because Google says lots of different things like sticks some people say it is a liquid some people say it's not I'm kind of now thinking I don't really I'm not worried <laughs> and if they want to get rid of it then I mean I mean Alex bought that in the first place I didn't buy that so it's not the end of the world. I've got my handbag because we've got a cabin bag and then a smaller bag. And then I just got these yesterday from Kitsch in boots. Um, I've bought from Kitsch before because they have lots of like recycled um, products made from recycled materials. And this one is basically BPA free, dishwasher safe, durable, lightweight, compact, eco-friendly, reusable, leak proof, refillable, blah, blah, blah. And it just came with these little refill bottles. Most of my um, products kind of were under 100 mil anyway, but I put shampoo, conditioner, some AHA like toner and my cleanser in there along with some other things. And then this one is like more of my makeup and perfume. And me and Alex are just gonna be sharing all of this because he will literally just use face wash, moisturizer and a deodorant. <laughs> um, so he doesn't care we're sharing. And that's kind of where I'm at with my packing. 
I think later I'm going to steam my clothes and then fold them neatly so that they look nice and clean and tidy before I travel and then if there's any creases I'm sure they'll just come out but that's it yeah I'm going to probably put this all away later and decide exactly what I'm wearing on the travel or what I want to yeah what I want to have haven't checked in with you for a few hours because I was working I was just editing I'm heading to Truro now to get my hair done um, I've washed my fake tan off let me know what you think it's really lovely actually it's given a really natural glow nothing too extreme which is just what I wanted and Alex even said it looked really good and I'm hoping because I've done it a few days before it will wear down a little bit and I also have like a body makeup which I might bring with me and just touch it up a little bit so my hair is looking pretty gross actually to be honest with you because it just has got really greasy I don't know what it is look at me with my tan um I'm very excited to have my hair done and it'll be the complete look I'll have my nails my tan my hair my sister joked earlier she's like what's next boob job <laughs> and we'll be ready for Italy and I'll be in the Italy mood I am gonna when I get home finish the packing give the house a nice little clean and just yeah get the get the car ready Alex got the car cleaned <gasps> gonna put the snacks in the car because we got some snacks yesterday and it's all ready to go yay we're back with glamorous long locks I actually cannot get over how long my hair has gotten look at this blow dry I love um all the different girls at girl goldbird always do a different kind of blow dry this is totally like a, a 70s um almost like victoria's secret vibe the kind of long wavy it smells so delicious i always get a treatment i get the aveda treatment and if you haven't um used aveda products before they are superior <laughs> and if you you probably have a aveda salon where you are it's um, the products that I've only ever used for dyeing my hair because it's more natural. Of course, um, cruelty free and I'm pretty sure they're almost, If I feel like they're all vegan now. Um, and maybe they have been for a long time, but um, Goldbird in Truro is excellent. Love all the girls there. You will always have a good haircut and hair dye if you book whoever. Taryn did my hair today and i haven't had her do my hair before because um sammy my hairstylist she's on maternity so i've had lots of different people do my hair but like i actually can't look at this this volume i definitely need it cut next time because the ends are getting a bit uh fine and she did say probably next time's a good time to do it but i'm just so happy that my hair is getting long again i had this like phase where my hair just would not grow and i think i was having it cut too frequently and i don't think i was really like looking after my hair i think i was like being a bit careless whereas now i'm really thinking about my hair um, i'm thinking about my diet and i'm pretty much every time i wash my hair i'm oiling my scalp which probably is the main thing that's helping i'm like really massaging my hair i have a bath and i'll put the oil in um, overnight and then um, massage it in and then put it through the ends just before i wash it out and then i always use a mask like a deep conditioning mask and maybe the steaming is helping to moisturize my hair but I'm just so pleased with the the length and the volume of it right now um because I think last time I had my hair this long it wasn't in this good of a condition and I love when when the hairdressers tell you that your hair is in good condition she was like your hair's in great condition anyway enough about hair I know lots of you don't really care about that but I'm really interested in hair and I'm just I'm really happy with it now the question is do I get next time I get it cut do I get a fringe because I had a fringe for years let me try and show you what it could look like. Do I go for a sort of like that? That was that was the look. Fringe and long, long hair. Or will I get tired of that? Let me know. Because <laughs> I'll have to grow it all out again. Anyway, I'll stop looking at myself in the viewfinder. I do struggle with that. I know that's kind of annoying when I edit. I'm like, Maddie, look at the camera. But if you um, haven't ever vlogged before, when you vlog looking into a black hole i just can't teach myself to do that 
you're going to look at the screen because it's a picture and also I'm checking to see if I'm in frame, if I'm in focus, uh, if, if you can see what I'm talking about, especially if I'm talking about my hair or something. So I'm, I apologise if that's annoying, but it is, it, I have to remind myself to like, I'm still not used to it after all these years looking into just a black hole. I'm going to get home though because the toilets here are closed off and I need to go to the loo, so I've got to get home and have some dinner and just do the final bits of packing and it's gonna be frantic I already know because I have to do a bit of work for a brand that has just um amended some things so I have to quickly do something for them and just try and get everything sorted and I'm probably gonna be up late but it's fine it's fine I'll nap in the car <laughs> we have arrived in Borgo San Marco in Puglia for Sophie and Benjamin's wedding and we're all ready to go to the pool and who knows how much I'll vlog but I'll try and vlog so Sophie can watch this back and have some video um, but it's beautiful here, we've just arrived and I'll show you outside, but it's so pretty. <laughs> I've got my little linen fox maxi and my Vivea sandals on, ready to hit the pool. Yay! So we've had a nice little catch up at the pool. We've actually moved to this little room. Not little, it's a big room. <laughs> um, but we've got this little area at the front which has Sophie's veil. <laughs> and we're like almost underground. And out here is the beautiful olive grove. Like how beautiful. They've got all the shutters closed obviously because it gets hot. And then in here is our nice bed which looks so cosy the small alcoves and then sneak peek of Sophie's dress which is hanging up here and then we have our little his and hers sink just love the decor of this place it's amazing here is my bridesmaid dress which is this stunning burnt orange I've already shown you it on and this evening I'm gonna wear this blue dress Alex has a headache I'm gonna have a shower, refresh myself, put makeup on, have a big glass of water, and then we're gonna all be meeting in the courtyard for food and drink before the big day tomorrow. And in Italy, it's um, really laid back the timing, I think probably because of the weather or traditionally, I think in the UK you have the wedding ceremony around lunchtime, but here it's at four. So it's um, back a bit, which means we have a nice leisurely start tomorrow, which is gonna be so nice. This place is just so beautiful and it's really great to catch up with everyone outside at the pool and meet everyone I haven't met and say hello to those people who were on the hen do or I've met when I visited Sophie and Benjamin in Brussels and so looking forward to a fabulous wedding. Look at it out here. Oh my gosh. This is my outfit. Alex is doing his um, husbandly duties. Speak up. Huh? Speak up. Alex is doing his husbandly duties filming me. So I've got my MS sandals. They're a nice little MS sandal dupe. This dress is from nearby. As in, I think that's the name of the brand. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> and then I've got my lovely Chanel from Luxury Promise, second hand. Um, that's it, really. How are you? I've got my nice little MS hoop earrings. My lovely little gold necklaces. Are you ready for the evening? Do you want to show your outfit? It kind of matches. Sure. Dice and air up my hair with the like the brush attachment. I think this actually looks better than when I do the curls. Yeah. Like it looks. It's got the. Volume. Yeah, but it's got these little. <laughs> this is Alex, Alex's outfit. Nice coiffed hair. You are completely out of focus. You know, sh shirt. I'm not sold on the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> They're the only kind of casually slip-on shoes. I need to get better ones. Yeah, but I love the colours. Yeah. Looks looks good. Your hair looks really nice. Does it? Yeah, oh. I like it. It's all going all curly. I mean, that's it's wet the, still, but it's going curly. That's the moose from the the boots at the airport. And I can hear People liveliness. A new place, a new home for a while, let me feel alive. 
nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. It's the ride! <laughs> yeah. man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in it, so where I can find myself. person you've become and how proud we are of you. With your drive and fiery spirit, you succeed in all that you do. From waitressing at a seafood restaurant and working in Jack Wills, you're now heading up a team at building luxurious hotels. Whatever to me 
morning. It's the day after the grand wedding. Um, <laughs> still having alcohol. It is 4 p.m. I just got myself a glass of wine. And I'm gonna debrief you on the incredible once in a lifetime wedding that we experienced yesterday. Sophie and Benjamin's wedding was the most amazing thing in the world. I think I did film quite a bit. It was just spectacular, like, Sophie looked absolutely breathtaking as always, but she just looked like a model bride. Her dress was so beautiful and <laughs> we got so emotional when she came out and uh, me and my sister Charlie, we wrote a poem for her and we just immediately broke down in tears when we started to read it to her. I just like looked at her and I just couldn't stop crying because we've been friends with Sophie since, well, I think 2010. So we've had like a long, friendship it was just so so lovely to see her and benjamin get married i just love weddings so much and to go to weddings when you're close with like really close with the people who are getting married is just wonderful and the setting the location was just unreal lots of my makeup was in my handbag for yesterday so the ceremony was a complete <laughs> surprise for all of us i'm just using this huh okay, you sun cream the skin and me one i'm using this little wind or wind uh, t tinting water and they also sent me their moisturiser it's beautiful, I'm obsessed with this brand it really works, I put a little bit of fake towel on before I came this is a nice little glow but the location was in the most incredible olive grove and it was a complete surprise to us, we didn't know um, and they were a bit worried because the weather forecast was unsure if it was going to rain and they were wondering should we move it but they went ahead and they were so happy they did because it was amazing like you walked over and it was just down these steps and you could just see all these olive trees like that are just super old and the view was amazing and everyone was sitting on the steps and it was just beautiful um the ceremony was so personal lovely and then uh we had some like what do you call it is it aperitivos or shop what's it called like Aperitivo. TV. Um, on like the lawn area at the top and then we went down to the actual olive grove and had dinner in the olive grove which was just so magical when I was sitting there I was thinking like this is like out of a movie I feel like I will never forget this for the rest of my life it was so stunning and they had organized it so beautifully and they had the most amazing buffet food so just the most huge abundance <laughs> of delicious Italian food and we were all sitting on a long table and there were festoon lights and it was so romantic because within their speeches and their vows they talked about how when they first started dating and they used to travel to Puglia together and um, visit and they had always said, they said the same thing in their vows which was adorable but they'd said that they were going to get married one day in Puglia you know, in an olive grove under the, under the festoon lights. And that was Sophie's dream and she made it happen. It's just so, so sweet. And we had so much fun. All the guests were just, it's so nice meeting, you know, people who are friends with your friend <laughs> and everyone was having such a lovely time. It was such a beautiful atmosphere and we were all just laughing and singing and dancing. And we, you know, dance on the dance floor up back at the courtyard at the hotel for the till like four in the morning and then went in the pool until the sun rose and it was just the best night had the best time i love a wedding so happy for the two of them they're married and i'm getting ready now because we're going to a little beach bar uh as like a little second day fun activity for those of us who are still here i think lots of people have gone home but for travel lots of people are staying for today because it would be a bit it was a bit much for us to go back the day after and also it's kind of fun to make it a weekend wedding so you get to really really soak it up and that's actually something that we did and it's really lovely to have like a weekend where you have all your friends and family gather and so you can really make the most of it and soak it up yeah what a amazing day i've just realized i didn't put sun cream on my face i'm going to put on now over my concealer that i've just spent all that time talking to you Put him on. It's okay, maybe this concealer will last. I don't think I need sun cream on my under eyes, so it should be okay. 
just an amazing wedding and I'm so happy for both of them. What a beautiful couple they are. And what a, I just, it's, these sorts of memories are so important for life, aren't they? Won't ever forget it. So we're gonna get ready, go to the beach bar, have a drink, have some food and just continue celebrations. And then we go home tomorrow morning. Which should be sad. What a beautiful way to spend a weekend. And I would love to come back to Puglia and explore because um, obviously we're here for a wedding, but I'd love to visit and explore the area because I've not actually been to the south of Italy before. Now I have, but it would be really fun to do that and um, experience it. And the food last night, I didn't say the food. Oh my goodness. Spiritual experience having Italian food. Just amazing. Anyway, I'll show you my outfit when I'm done. I'll get ready. Because I feel like I'm, I'm looking a bit strange doing this while I talk to you. But I do have... I've only got like half an hour, so I need to get a move on. <laughs> Put you on this little thing. I don't know if you can really see me. But I've got my uh, faithful dress, which I wear all the time. Repeat outfit wherever I am. Um, and then I've got my Vivea little shoes, which I wore dancing last night. So can you even see them? The red ones. They are marked, but the good thing about Vivea, and I do still have a discount code with them, um, is that you can wash them. So when I want to go home, I can just wipe them. But they were my dancing shoes last night and they are going to be good for today. And that's it. I'm just going to take my little M&S straw handbag and we're going to meet everyone and go down to the beach, which will be lovely. My hair is um, actually surprising because we went in the pool last night. I came home and showered and um, put some product in my hair but fell asleep with it wet so I zhuzhed it and it's actually turned out fine. I look so tired, look at this. This is 5am under eye bags. <laughs> mm -hmm. 